Eyes for Allah, nothing but Allah. Ba is the beginning of Bismillah. Ta is for Taqwa, the wearing of Allah. And Tha is for Thawab, a reward. Ja is for Jannah, the garden of paradise. Ha is for Hajj, the blessed pilgrimage. Kha is for Khatem, the seal of the prophethood given to the prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Da is for Deen, Al-Islam, religion with Allah since time began. Da is for Dhikr, remembering Allah, and rise for the month of Ramadan. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeeb. Bismillahi rahmani rahim. Ash-hadu an la ilaha illa Allah wa hada wa la sharika. Wa nashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. It's the second day of the new month of Rabiul Thani, equivalent to the seventh day of November 2021. And we are glad to welcome you to another rewarding episode of the most informative and responsive TP program on Zakat related matters, Paths to Paradise. We are happy and grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making us witness this new month and on behalf of the entire management of Zakat and Sodakot Foundation, we say Jazakum la khairan to all of you out there. Please stay tuned as we take you on this path to paradise. As usual, my name is Maruf Ahmad. I'm Ms. Baudin Ismail. We'll be right back with the lecture segment after this time out. Stay tuned. Began that is for Dick, remembering Allah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين هدنا صراط المستقيم صراط الذين نعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على محمد وسلم بعد فسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Today إن شاء الله we are focusing on mental health and the uh, orphans as well as the vulnerable challenger uh, vulnerable children uh, as we all know that all men or every man is a composition of uh, spirit and matter all of us we have the spiritual part of us and we have the material or physical part of us. These are the two things that make us. One is inner, one is outer. We can see our eyes, we can see our bodies, we can see our legs, our hands, our nose. But we can't see the way the mind thinks. We can't see the soul. So the soul, the mind, they are different things. So we, you can only think something in your mind, we can't see what the mind is thinking. So when we talk of the orphans, they have their mental situation too, as well as other uh, vulnerable children. That is why the disposition of a child who is an orphan or any other vulnerable child is dependent on the state of his mind, his mental situation that will carry him to be able to adapt and you know be in that situation of not being affected or being corrupted by any situation that's why in the quran allah talks of wanafsi wa masawaha allah says that every soul is taught you know to know the bad from the wrong is orientation because prophet equally says that kullu mawlud Every child, you are born on the, on the natural part. But for Abawahu, you have with Anihi, are you not strong? He is a parent that turns them to something else. So, the point we want to first establish is that every child, being an orphan or vulnerable child, is made out of his mind and his physique. So, but this context, we are talking of the mental aspect of the child. Talking of his wellness, his appearance, his feelings, his emotions, and the like. 
they will realize that when a woman is pregnant, for example, you know, it has spiritual angle. What she should be doing at that point in time. If the husband, for example, does not treat her well, does not show her concern, or society does not take care of her very well, it's likely it affects this child's mental health. Because the first 2,000 days of a child matters and forms his mental health. Because of that, you realize that no child wants to be outside the home. Every human being wants to belong somewhere. This is my mom, this is my dad, this is my uncle, this is my aunt. If you have an occasion where by people are introducing themselves with their parents and the child is there, he has no mom, it's likely you start to cry because of a particular attachment with the mother. So imagine a child now who has no father or a child who has no father and mother. The way they will think will be different from other children. So that's one alone required that society must be conscious of that. Children with their parents will think in a different way. That at least on, on, at least on some occasions, which of course we have to note. Therefore, there's need to stabilize these very children. One, shelter. Giving them a loving roof whereby they will not live with a stepmom who will make the home a, either a graveyard or a hell for them. This, though we have talked of they should be sheltered, but now they are living in a home where they are good as not living in a very home because of the utterances. Even at times, some are good to the extent of even denying them food at times. Some are treating them, beating them, you know, violently. So this is an angle. Shelter can affect the mental health of an orphan or any vulnerable child. So even when they live under a roof, they must be given attention in that respect. Second, provisions. They must be provided all they need to the extent of one's ability. Because if they need books, they, can, they don't get it. They need clothes, they don't get it. Other needs, they don't get it. It's very likely it you know, affects them to start thinking of other things to do. They want to run away from the house. They want to get it from other sources. If it's a girl, it's even worse. Which she can, can lead her to become, to become a wayward or to be equally sexually abused. So we need to provide what they need when they live with us. You know? So when we are taking responsibility, we should ensure we, 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 we follow up and assist them. In a case where a man... You know, a, man's, uh, one of the, a man who has two wives and one dies, then the stepmom remains. A man must be extra vigilant in ensuring that the child is not oppressed or bullied because it can happen. Even especially before the, mother, the child's mother died, they have been kind of a tug of war or they've been at war ends. Then she's likely to want to vent that venom on the child. The man must be attentive to that respect. It is a case that the man brings an orphan from the family to the house. And the wife is not in the tune with it. It's likely she wants to start reacting in different ways, denying some things. And she can even lie against the child that the man cannot even, that the child will not be to. And some children at times they will be so, they be naive that they can't just say she's lying. So we just to, you know, they start to embrace this like that. At the long run, it can affect such a child, affect their way, the way they think, even lead them to depression at times. That's what we have to note in a case we have to uh, orphans in our in our domains then at this stage two children of that kind of situation vulnerable children they need kind words consoling words that will make them to feel at home because at that you provide everything for them they have a good school they have the clothes they have the food but watch you know what we utter what we say can destroy all the things because words are more powerful than bullets because they make them to start to think of if at times you think of committing suicide in some situation at times, so you have to be careful of the utterances, especially those who want to start taking care of them. You must know that they should be careful not to utter things that can make them to think uh, evil. Thus, we have to stabilize them emotionally. The two major areas are the schools and the home. So, in a case whereby a child of such situation goes to a school, 
those the caregivers there must be made to know the child situation, not compounding the problem. In a case at times, if it's often in a class, the teacher should know it's an orphan, so that you guide them on how they treat them in the class. Not that they treat them too specially, but there are times some things you want to discuss at times in the class. You want to make some examples, and you, at long run, you end up, you know, arousing his feeling that to make him to start feeling that his mom is not around. So schools where we have orphans, they should be no issue. No, those of us, you may think that you don't want them to know the status of the child. It's not all. It doesn't always help the child. If the teachers are well trained and they are there, it's better they know so that they will have other attention. At times, the child could just be lonely somewhere, not always going down for, for break, always sleeping in class, not being attentive. He can be in the, lost in thought about his mom. That's why the time they are talking about maybe they have an, as an event in the school, for example, now other parents, other mothers come, his own mother is not there. He can start to think or can just withdraw somewhere. So the teacher must be ready to know what kind of situation the child is going through. With that background information, okay, they will know that it can be that. Then they cannot ask as local local parents for the child even in the school there. That is very important in the school setting. And then we have to watch out to prevent bully where other children want to the kind of uh, maybe they are able to get all that they want. He doesn't have, get what he wants and say we can prevent that kind of situation too. Then in the home too, where we have such a child, we have to ensure that the health situation of the child, the emotional, the psychological, the everything is living with the other children. We have to be careful of how we treat them, how we talk to them. Is using of things in the in, at home. At times, some will be relaxed with their own children. They can use anything. They can, for example, ordinarily turn on turn on the television alone. Some will just uh, when it's his turn of such a child who is a vulnerable child, they can deny him. What's going and turn? To, what's going and turn it on? What's going and take it? Well, their own children, they will not even talk. You know that can affect the child. So it's it can affect his mental health. So you have to be careful treating them equally. Is very very important because it's a thing that is a world doing to get reward. So that one is there. Then two, so children who are vulnerable, apart from those who may have cause to go to the rehab centers, there's need for them to have somebody who will be there like their mom, like their mother, like their father, that they will not think of missing their parents in any form again. If a child, for example, now the parent died due to illness, the child can't forget. You always remember him. So somebody must be there to cover that for him, not to think of what happened to the mom or what happened to the dad. If a child is there, parents have not even died, but they are suffering from chronic illnesses that the child itself has lost hope. They spend the whole money and they are just begging to even survive. So the child is vulnerable. He can take to anything, he can even decide that if I die, even die before, my, before my mother dies or my father dies. That situation, we have to manage it. That somebody must be there that he can always go back to and you know discuss with and express himself. This one is very important in a situation like that too. Then also, we need to ensure that such children are properly engaged by specialists too. When we observe some happenings around the child, maybe he's too quiet, he's at times aggressive. All those we should not just assume that the child is now is not just not just beating the child. We have to know that. A child like that may be suffering some internal torture that he has not been able to, able to express to anybody. So we need a psychiatrist or a psychologist that can attend to the child, who will now engage the child through some instruments of research, and they will be able to know, okay, this child, this is what the problem is. Somebody can he be able to express himself. This is very important as a way of knowing the child. So we can, like, what we call referral, where we observe these things. So those who who attend to vulnerable children have to be very careful because you may, in an attempt to help, you may end up causing more problem and damage to the child. In an attempt to help, you may cause, you may cause your, or you may end your own life too. Because some children are so violent that they can even attempt to even kill the person who is a, who is their caregiver because they feel maybe they feel they have been wronged. Which may not be deliberate or a uh, you know, kind of a uh, conscious actions. That's why we must be vigilant and observant. When we observe such traces, it's aggressive. It's always shouting. It doesn't. Others are hating. He said, "No, it's interested." Others are going this way. It's going the other way. They are going to school. Say, "I will not follow them." He wants to go alone. You know. All these things you have to be careful. At times, even with school bags, you have to at times check what is inside the bag. At times, you could write one or two things. At times, if at times you can plan to do something, we will write it down first and thinking of what to do about it. All these things we have to be conscious of when we have such children living with us, so that we will not end up causing more problem or damage for ourselves or the child. We pray to Allah that Allah give us righteous children and make our children be 
happens of our eyes that we won't have any cause to regret caring for any children in the world. Akulu matesmauna. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Again, that is for Dick, remembering Allah. Welcome back and thanks for staying with us. On our second segment today, we will inshallah be showing you the highlights from one of our projects which has been made possible by your donations and your contributions. Please, don't go away. We will be back after the highlights of the event. Began, that is for Dick, remembering Allah. I am last privileged. I've run up an um, elder skeleton. No one to help me. My mom, my dad, are less privileged. I can get help from her. And besides, I am a visually handicapped. I can't see. So there is no other place to get help. So along the line that I had this, I could get what I want from the cartoon Tulaco. Bilkis Agbede is visually impaired, but vibrant and full of abilities. She is passionate about exploring the floodgates of opportunities available in the academic world as a means to attaining greater heights in life and fulfillment of her dreams and purpose, but constrained by finances for education. At the 17th edition of Sakat Distribution Ceremony by Sakat and Sadako Foundation, a dream was rekindled. I am less privileged. I've run up an elder skeleton. No one to help me. My mom, my dad, are less privileged. I can get help from her. And besides, I am a visually handicapped. I can't see. So there is no other place to get help. So along the line that I had this, I could get what I want from the cartoon to Saying Say them, Zakum Lohair unto them. And I pray. Um, that Allah reached the elbow, Mark reached the elbow. Yes, at least it's a two year program on 150 per year, so at least yeah, the tuition fee is out of it, the uh, um, other expenses and um, um, whatever stuff is, I at least I'll be able to go to manage myself. Christian, Nimi, Christian, Nimi. Just like Bill Keys, Veronica Fagbami is also visually impaired and a widow. Without religious discrimination, Sakat and Sadaka Foundation lesson aborting. <laughs> Christian <laughs> Allah, in his all encompassing knowledge, institutionalized Sakat as a religious obligation upon all believing men and women who have been blessed and made self sufficient in order to lift those with restricted means out of poverty through annual donation of 2.5% of their net worth or on valuable assets fixed for the duration. 
Sakat and Sadako Foundation has been judicious in its administration and disbursement of donations received over the years to the categories of people captured by Allah in his decree as eligible to receive the fund and is unrelenting in its efforts to actualize its vision and mission. The non-governmental charitable organization is making impact in different sectors of the economy, complementing government efforts to alleviate poverty in Nigeria and neighboring countries in Africa. From empowering artisans to transporters, new business ideas have also been given life to and existing ones nurtured and supported. The achievements of Sakat and Sadako Foundation are evident in the numerous testimonies of beneficiaries. I know me doing Tori, King also Dodo, Moses open before. So they want to watch, want to watch the message, making your juicy one. Moses do quite a lot of Sakat and Sadaka, but do quite a couple of them. Tori, you can't turn around for me. By the grace of God, I'm happy to be coming Sakat. Beneficiaries <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. In fact, it was a sister of mine that just informed me early this year, and I went for the for the interview. For the past two or three months ago, my phone is not in good condition, so I couldn't get across to them. And one fateful morning, my sister called me that have I been message? I said no. Even I've lost hope in it. But two weeks ago, Saturday, it, it was around 7 p.m. in the evening, I received a call that from Zakat and Sadakat Foundation, I should report at TBS in their office on Sunday, and I went there. I even thought it's a joke. They said they've sent me a message. I said my phone was not in good condition, so I went there. On getting there, I happened to be the first beneficiary that came that very day. On getting there, when they interviewed me, I was told that I, they approved freezer for me that I should go. I was like just like that. What I didn't work for, I learned the lie that I happened to be a beneficiary. When I get back home, I told my children because I'm a widow. It's like a dream until I get there. I get there and I was called to come and redeem my gifts. I was overwhelmed. I'm happy. I'm really lying. I'm healthy, my children are healthy, and at least I'm able to fend for myself and my children. But with the help of this freezer, my business will improve because I'm into canteen business. I need freezer and generator to boost my business. Alhamdulillah, my business will improve. According to the executive director of the foundation, Prince Sulaiman Olagunju, the Sakat and Sadako Foundation is committed to continuously lend a helping hand to the needy through judicious disbursement of Sakat proceeds geared towards eradicating poverty and making the world a better place for all without religious sentiment or discrimination. We are hoping, we are working very hard. We are looking for the day very soon, very soon. We are expecting the next two, three years. We should be able to reach one million naira, I mean one billion naira disbursement in Lagos State alone. That's our target in the next two, three years. One billion, one billion naira, one billion naira to be disbursed to the needy and poor people in Lagos State. And we are looking at saying the day we are saying we are disbursing as much as five billion across the country. We are poverty will really be tackled. So we are very hopeful that 
with support we are getting from our payers, we will get there. My sincere appeal is all, Muslim, all other Muslims that are here to be paying their zakat. They should not allow zakat to take itself from their world. Because if zakat take, the, take its own from somebody's world, it's going to destroy that world. And if you are having challenges with your business, one of the most things you should look at is perhaps you have not been paying your zakat. If you are paying your zakat, I can bet you your business will continue to grow. You will not have challenges. But if you don't pay zakat as Muslims, that is one of the serious sign of problem that might come. So please come up. Let's pay our zakat. Let's put it together. Let it impact as it ought to be in the society. And let people see that beauty of Islam that come. Zakat has eradicated poverty before. And when we are saying we want to do it, we can't do it alone without you and everybody coming on board. Those of us are qualified to pay Zakat. Just to an half percent of our wealth. Just to an hour. It's so, so small that Allah is asking. When Allah takes this money, it's not for Allah, it's not for the Imams, it's not for the religious scholars, it's for the poor people in our society. Muslims and non-Muslims alike are to benefit from this. By the time we deploy that, I am very sure that Zakat, I mean, poverty will disappear in our midst. He, however, urged well-meaning individuals to purify their wealth by paying the Zakat duly, which will in turn be disbursed to the needy in different communities. Again, that is for Dick, remembering Allah. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Thanks for joining us for this week's episode of the most authoritative TV program on Zakat-related matters. That is Path to Paradise. Always remember that at Zakat and Sadaka Foundation, we do not discriminate nor show prejudice on religion or ethnic to our beneficiaries. And as we wrap up today's episode, please note that your donation will go a long way to put food on the tables and smiles on faces of so many families who are in their need. Please donate as little as you can to Zakat and Sodakot Foundation. Also, you can now watch our previous episodes of Path to Paradise on our YouTube channel. Simply search for Zakat and Sodakot Foundation Nigeria to view our previous episodes. Also, visit our website www.zakatandsodakot.org.ng and follow us on our social media platforms for more information on what we do and our various services. And we say, Masala. Began, that is for Dick, remembering Allah.